I was talking to Danny before we came on air. Mudrick on the bench, Felix on the bench, Mount on the bench. These Chelsea fans were thinking, well, are we or are we not two down to Real Madrid? And is this the second leg of a two-leg tie? Are we going to have a tilt at this lot? You can almost put money on the fact that whatever they did would be toothless and would lack a cutting edge. And that's exactly what we saw. So, Simon, it almost begs the question this morning. And taking personalities aside, as it stands, is Frank Lampard in danger of overseeing an even bigger decline than when he arrived? Um, I don't think anything's materially changed. I don't think anything's changed with a group of players. I don't think anything's changed at the situation at the football club in terms of people's outlooks. And I think the quicker they get this season over and done with, and someone that can actually run the football operation um, or, uh, you know, with a forward-thinking perspective. Look, you look at the performance yesterday and you say Chelsea had 19 shots on goal again. This is a, this is a common statistic that Chelsea occupy possession. They they take the they, they take uh, teams to a certain position and they can't score goals. Now everyone will turn around and say, well, why don't you play a Yang and why don't you bring Lukaku back from loan? And it can't be that obvious. There must be other reasons why these players aren't featuring and why they can't square circles and resolve situations. But the bottom line is, I don't know anybody really that would have assumed that Frank Lampard was going to achieve anything different. I don't understand the appointment. I genuinely do not understand the reasons for it, besides the fact that there's a populist mentality that somehow you're going to appease a group of people by putting in somebody they liked as a player. The team is the problem. The results are the problem, and you needed someone to come in and affect the outcome of the results, not someone to subsequently appeal to a certain section that still hold up a banner called Super Frank. No, true. I think I, it's silly. And, of course, Danny, we knew that Frank backed himself <laughs> when he came in, but four games and four defeats for him and one goal scored on from that stage... It has gone very wrong. Yeah, I completely understand why he took it. Um, he must have been surprised at the call, but I understand because he would have had belief that he could go in and get a result against Madrid and all of a sudden his stock could get lifted. The stupidity around it for me is that a new manager coming in who's going to be there for the long term, somebody they decide who wants to take the club forward, had a wonderful opportunity in the last month or two of the season to assess what he's got, start working on the philosophy and new ideas in a a less pressurised situation where nobody's expecting anything. Yeah. And he can try things and look at players and start telling them who he wants out the door and start planning on who he might want in. Because any new manager is going to like and dislike certain players. Because some of those, even if they go out on loan, a lot of those players are going to have to leave. So you think the permanent guy should have been in the, Oh, my now? God, yes. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. I, think, I think they've missed... It. Because, look, whoever they bring in, has got to go in and start on day one, which will be, what, uh, probably July. And then he's got four to six weeks. Should they do it now? Yeah. Now that they're out of the Champions League. Well, how, how long can it... Uh, the only thing I can say, Si, is if, if they are desperately wanting someone who is in a, already in a role, already somewhere, in a, managing someone else, and they've said, well, I'll come, but at the end of the season, whatever. Right. But why, why wouldn't you... If, if one of the candidates who's out of work, you, the person you want is not in work, the sooner he gets in, the better chance Chelsea have got of being successful next So you're year. talking about sack the interim? Well, I don't think that... I mean, listen, I think... We that don't ship, need to sack him. I think the ship has probably sailed. I think the opportunity to have made that decision should have been made prior to bringing Frank in. I've got no issue with Frank Lampard. I don't... Uh, once upon a time, I thought he had the credentials to be elite manager. I don't see any evidence supporting that initial perspective that I had. Nothing, nothing has supported that. So I don't see why you'd bring him back in to hold the fault on a side that clearly is struggling for a variety of reasons. There can't be any argument these players are good enough to compete at this level. Because clearly, the amount of money that's been spent on players, the performance of these players in previous incarnations tell you that they are better players than the outcomes that they're currently producing. There is something... There is a malaise at Chelsea... And whether it's because of the seven months with Potter that allowed a management style to develop and just stay in the minds of these players where they don't understand what's expected of them or they can't deliver because they've got stuck in first gear and they can't get out of it now and they needed a different voice and it wasn't Frank Lampard's voice and it never was going to be Frank Lampard's voice. Yeah. So with all that in mind, they should have made that change. I think now with this backdrop of the narrative that's building up around Bowley, he may not care. 
He may not care about the background noise, but some of the things that are going on are very ill-advised. It's silly to allow yourself to build up a reputation as someone that goes into dressing rooms and involves yourself in what's going on in there. It's an irrelevance for football owners to be in a dressing room. There's no place for you there. Maybe pop in there at the beginning of the season, wish them a good season, and maybe pop in at the end of the season and say thank you for the season. But you don't get involved on a regular basis of wandering in that dressing room. The player's not interested in what you have to say. You've been in though, haven't you? I don't know, you went in. Yeah, and you learn your <laughs> lessons. I think, you know, I wrote a column specifically about this for tomorrow called First season syndrome about chairman and owners that seem to think there's a benefit of listening to people who we can't have any of that and wandering into a dressing room talking to a bunch of players that will only view you as someone that's going to fire the guy that they actually work for the when moment you, you in there when you were off yesterday Simon I asked the ownership I was texting I asked the ownership is it fair or unfair this pushback on you going into the dressing room and that it came back I don't know if it's fair or unfair all we ask for is that the players fight for the fans who invest their money time and energy in those players we care about winning on and off but the you're pitch not, but you're not going to you are not going to impart that message to them as an owner of a football club directly after a game you are not going to and if you don't if you have a manager that's his job it's not your job. You're, you're, the only thing you can concentrate their minds with is their pay packets and not wanting them at the end of a season. The bottom line is owners going into dress rooms, and I'm the first one to, to push back against the orthodoxy. I'm the first one to say, I'm not having this football nonsense about what you can and can't do. You do not need to be in a dress room. And the moment you start being in a dress room, you undermine the manager and you start allowing a narrative Depends to be built what up you in the do. media. Have you sat in a dressing room, Danny, and the owners walked in? Well, I'll give you a perfect example in my experience. I don't know if you knew David Moores. Uh, yes, of course I did, yeah. yeah. Now, a wonderful human being. Um, would never come in and rant and rave and start sort of telling you, you know, what to do or kick you up the backside, but just loved being around it. And he had that right, and he'd come in and became it became, for me and a lot of the lads, and I can say this genuinely hand on heart, he became part of it a little bit, always, you know, always in there, always with us around. And it kind of felt like, actually... We're all together. Yeah, and, and, I, and, I'm, and I, we want to do it for and, him as and well. that's fine, right? But when you've got a culture being built up around a football club that's currently in disarray, and an owner that's walking in after games, right? Because and a, and a statement coming out from Chelsea saying we just want to remind these players this is not someone walking in there for Bonami. This isn't someone walking in there to turn around and say to the players we're all together. This is clearly someone walking in there to express the frustrations of himself. So I get and, back. So yeah. So, so you go, shouldn't be there. So I go back to my original point. Though it depends how you conduct yourself when you're in there. I think the actual statement of saying you should never be in there. I don't. I don't agree. I think it's what you say. And how you conduct yourself while you're in there that's crucial because what you can do is it can be advantageous to the group by having an owner who's actually conducts himself in a real supportive way and actually you feel like you know come on nonsense okay. Danny what you then created well I, I lived what, it what, what, you created it you, I lived you, you it lived it to a certain point at a time when Liverpool weren't particularly smashing the the, 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 the the light fantastic in terms of a team being successful but go beyond that and look at the bigger picture and say right what you do is you open up doors for owners to believe that players can come to them you build cultures inside dressing rooms that are wrong players are managed by managers and I don't care what you I say agree as a with football that. player. The moment you bring that, that that relationship as a chairman available to, at certain points to a player, you will find it abused. There's nothing wrong with going in. I used to do it. At the beginning of the season, say to the lads, you know, have a good season. They yeah, set us yeah, all that, right? Yeah. I used to go in every now and again, mm. hide around the back and listen to the manager's team talks because I wanted mm. to get the feel of what was going on because I enjoyed it, especially yeah. Warnock. And at the end of the season, you know, I'd go in and say, you know, let's pick ourselves up for next yeah, season or whatever yeah. it was. But on a regular basis, no, because I think it was mismessaging. I think it was undermining I I... the manager's authority. And I think it allowed relationships to develop with players that were not healthy for the well-being of I the manager. I understand that. I'll, I'll fire did sometimes it did feel awkward sometimes when he came in actually undermining a manager a little bit and say some, silly, th some silly things yeah, yeah well yeah. You, you've probably met him you understand yeah Sammy get back to the square root of gauche if you were bully would you appoint a permanent manager now is that the priority now but again I, I, I find myself in a situation where what is the point now that ship has sailed you've got six seven games to go in the league because the it gives him time I, I know but it should have been done now what you're doing now is you're pandering to a narrative that other people are creating for you you're not running your football club anymore you're being driven by circumstances and also the decision should have been made four games ago you but make yeah. yourself a laughing stock now but apparently they've done all they've done these interviews with these Luis Enrique oh they're whoever, speaking to people Nagelsmann. Nagelsmann. Nagelsmann we well, you've understand. had the interviews who do you want get him in Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.